Okay. Hello, my friends. I just realized my mic was muted. I don't know why it was muted. <laughs> um, I hope that you can hear me. Um, I'm not sure. Normally it just unmutes itself. So uh, give me a bit of a thumbs up. Let me know if you're hearing me. That would be really, really great. Sometimes I'm always a little skittish with this uh, sound. So uh, yeah, let me know if you are hearing me. Give me a thumbs up and uh, that would be really awesome. Uh, but hello, everyone, if you're hearing me. Um, uh, let's see. Anybody give me a thumbs up? Let me know. Uh, yeah, Church Nelly is hearing me. She gave me like a million thumbs up. There you go. There you go. Yeah, normally it's like it just automatically unmutes and all of a sudden it's not unmuting. It is like, what? <laughs> so always my fear with Mike. But anyways, Welcome to Facts and Two Cents. If I hope it's nice and bright and sunshiny wherever you are. In New York, it's gray and raining and it's like, ew. <laughs> so I am sitting here having some ginger tea, my favorite tea in the whole world. Um, I mean, ginger is my drug. So <laughs> it's a cure-all for everything. So I'm having some ginger tea as I chat with you. But I hope everyone is doing well. I know our faves are doing well. <laughs> I mean, I saw this picture yesterday and I was like, this is my totally my vibe now. This is like inadvertent fashion spread photo without even trying. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning that's uh, her, uh, Megan and Alba and Delphina over here. I mean, how amazing is that shot? Talk about chill. <laughs> Florida slash California, rich money, chill. And Delphina in this awesome jumper that she's wearing there. That's just really cool. I love it. <laughs> um, and also love her straw hat. I mean, that is to die for. And Megan shades and I mean everything. The whole photo is just like chilling, watching photo. I think that's gonna be. I think I'm gonna use that as some kind of something. But I just I love it. It just puts you in a. It just puts you in a mood. And then there's Harry on a horse. I talk about this all the time. Like there is nothing more beautiful than watch watch just seeing photos of Prince Harry on a horse. I don't know how he is able to do this every single time. It's just how he is on a horse. It's just beautiful. He just is he's able to, to get some, we were able to get some of the most beautiful shots of Prince Harry on a horseback. It's like they're just made to be together somehow. And it's just, I mean, look at this shot. It's just so beautiful. And so <laughs> I'm like, yep, that those are my shots for the day. I mean, oh, and so of course. We're still, I'm still basking in all their glow and, from last weekend. So I'm not, I'm not going to be over these photos in a while. So don't be surprised if they pop up in just about every episode for like, for like the next week or so. So there you go. But before I move on, I just want to say hello to all my friends in the chat and hello to you guys who are not in the chat as the, at the moment. Uh, that's fine too, but hello to you as well. Nalo Thandu is joining us from uh, South Africa. Africa. Hello, Nella Fendu and Fancy Fancy, our awesome moderator, Church Nelly, who has been posting all the links for everything, Facts and Two Cents, and uh, Archwell slash Sussex.com. Thank you so much, Church Nelly. I appreciate uh, it's like Queen Doria. I don't know what is Queen Doria do. I haven't been on Twitter in like uh, the last hour or so, so maybe I missed something. <laughs> But thank you, Church Nelly. Yes, if you're uh, coming in, please like and share the video. And um, please subscribe if you have not subscribed. And hey, if you are able, please join the channel. That would be awesome as well. And of course, uh, Church Nelly has put all our faves uh, links to everything. Church Nelly, please uh, send a message to our faves. Like, put links on your website so people could just get there quickly and so american rivera is there but you know it's right now it's still the logo megan is just you know not, it's not a launch it's just sending her jam to her friends and they are jamming it's like the world is all about jam right now so megan and her jams so thank you church nelly for all the links that you have posted there i just click on it so you can see it so 
if you're looking for the links, just jump in um, on Church Nelly's post uh, for whatever it is you need. And she has posted them. So thank you for that kindness, uh, Church Nelly. Rafaela is here hanging out with us from Rome. Hello, Rafaela. Oh, Karen M is here. Oh, awesome, awesome moderator. Karen M is here. Kenitha is here. Hello, Kenitha. And Perlina, hello. And wait, did I say Karen Warner? Did I? Some, I don't know. Maybe I'm dreaming or something. I thought for some reason I thought I saw Karen Warner, but maybe I'm wrong. Coco is here. Hello, Coco. And Paulette is here. And Joan Commonwealth is here. And April, May. I think of April flowers and May showers. Well, we're getting them. We're getting the April showers night now in New York, at least. Um, Glenn is here. Hello, Glenn. And who else is here? Oh, uh, Annie is here. Hello, Annie and Amaka is here and Dawn's here. And we'll say hello to everyone else as we go along. So what else is going on in the world of our faves? This is so cool. Megan, her support of um for Alliance for Mom. This dropped earlier today. And it's just so pretty. I was like, oh, Megan and her friends. And um, it just it's an organization that, well, I'll read it and you you will see. It just in case you hadn't seen the photos, just in case you had not seen, and um, you know, or read any of it. So I just let me just move my little thingy here and my little banner here so I can read them without being disturbed. Anyway, so Heart Mom, which is Kelly, Kelly McKee Zephan, you guys will probably remember her. She is Megan's friend, Harry and Megan's friend. And I think Megan knew her from when she, before Harry, when she um, was married to her first husband, they were all friends. And so that's kind of thing. That's the connection Megan had with her. Like they're prior connection so like they've remained friends and uh, i think it was a couple of years ago her son i think he was nine years old he had medical issues and he just suddenly died and so it was very 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 tragic time and harry and megan were there really really supporting her and uh, supporting their family they have been several photos around with her and Megan just spending time together and just bonding, you know, helping her as she grieved her son. And so she created this organization and called Alliance for Mom. And at the bottom there, it says that um, their mission is to break the intergenerational cycle of babies being um, born to teens in foster care through educational programs and support and the support of a loving community. And so they have all these T-shirts. Actually, you can purchase the T-shirts if you're on um, if you're on. Instagram, you can just click on Heart Mom and they, I think the link in their profile, you can actually get those t-shirts. Uh, the t-shirt says love like a mother. And so they're all wearing it. And so that's uh, Kelly there with Megan and also, uh, oh my goodness, what is her name from the show? I forgot. Abigail. Hello. Megan's one of Megan's besties, Abigail from Suits. And so that's all three of them. When I saw this picture, I was like, oh my goodness. It took me a minute and I was like, oh, that's Megan. <laughs> and so it's just like, oh, girl time, cuddle time. And so it says, uh, when we speak about people in our lives, this is what she posted on Instagram. She says, when we speak about people in our lives who lift us up when we need it with undeniable force of pure love, I think of these two. You inspire me. You pick me up when I need it and you love like a mother. Thank you for continuing to support the Alliance for Mom, for supporting this campaign and our youth. In doing so, you're supporting the mission to build bright futures for young parents who, are, who have experienced foster care. In honor of Mother's Day, I hope you support this campaign and the love like and hashtag love like a mother proceeds for this t-shirt like the t-shirt that they have on support essential services education and adv advocacy so that young parents in foster care and their children can heal and thrive if you know anything about the foster care system in the u.s it's a lot so definitely um great organization to support if you're you know definitely go 
do your due diligence, do your research and all of that stuff. And if you're interested in ABLE, definitely support um, these ladies. But it's just really great that, you know, for, you know, what she says about Harry, uh, Harry and Megan, about Megan and Abigail just being there when she needed it and, you know, to support her as she, you know, I'm sure she's She's probably still grieving. I mean, I don't know how you get over that, you know, the loss of a child. But, you know, just her just saying how much they've been there for her and picked her up and loved her like a mom. I mean, that's when you need your mama. And so to have friends that will love you like that, I mean, that's you hold on to those friends. I have friends like that. And I'm like, I am not letting them go for nothing. <laughs> So Kelly, um, that and again, that's Kelly in the middle there. And these are a couple of other shots with them. I was like, oh, girl time. <laughs> you know, I love it. And so again, if you want to get a, a t-shirt, uh, definitely go on Instagram and go to go to her page and you can purchase the t-shirts to support them. But I love these girly fo photos. It's like Megan is such a girl's girl. <laughs> I, I mean, and it's wonderful because for so long people are like, oh, she doesn't have any friends. And it's like, no, Megan has a lot of friends. She just does not put them out there. So that way you guys don't have an opportunity to attack them as you normally would want to do. So I love that she's able to spend all of this time, you know, with her friends and be able to support them. I, I remember when her, um, her son had just died, you know, she and she was doing this. I think um, was, was a year and something ago. She one of the things she said about Megan is that Megan is always the first one to say yes when she needed support or when she needed support for this organization. Megan was like the first one to say yes, and I always remember that and how much she supports her friends. And so, Church Nelly just put the link. Oh, thank you, Church Nelly. She is on it. Thank you, Church Nelly. So again, if you want to check it out, here's the link. So just click on Church Nelly's post and you can and you can find this. Sylvia says, Megan's kindness, compassion, empathy have remained the same through the years. Even when Megan was going through her hardest time, h and are blessed to have each other. So very true. So very true. Uh, Terry says Megan has a big heart. She's so kind and generous. And that is one of the things people say about her all the time. You, that's one of the first thing they say, just her kindness, uh, her gentleness and her kindness. And it's just, it's wonderful. So yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Who else is saying stuff before we move on? Um, yeah. So anyways, uh, what else is happening? in our world and talking about kelly actually uh these are some of the um other photos that is she posted on her on her instagram and these are some of the ladies that are part of the love like a mother campaign so these are all photos of kelly with all these other women um i'm not sure if they are working with the organization or if some of them are part of the foster care or coming out of the foster care system i don't know it didn't say but these are uh women that are part of her campaign so this is her kelly with all um these other women so and also this was part one of her um uh, post that she says, she says, thank you, Meghan Markle and Abigail Spencer for supporting our campaign to improve and build a brighter future for young moms in foster care. And uh, that's Alliance tweeting, uh, posting this. And so, yeah, it's just very, very exciting to see. And again, I think it, it, the campaign may be going through Mother's Day, which is obviously coming up in May next month. I don't know what day is Mother's Day. I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm really bad with these days. So um, it seems that it's going uh, straight through Mother's Day. So yeah, very, very cool. And talk about Kelly. Uh, oh, this is the one uh, from last year. Um, the photo, um, and it was like Unity and Motherhood, I think it's called. Okay. So this was the photo that, um, that, she, that she posted last year with her and Megan by that tree that... <laughs> The tree we talked about, that's very famous tree in Harry and Meghan's yard. That's just done by that tree. And um, this was a, the photo she posted last year. But she was one of the people that got the basket of jam. And I think she was number three. It's so funny now that it's blown up 
the the little photo thing that I tried to clip in the middle there, it looked I could read it when um it's smaller, but you blow it up and you can't you can't tell what it says at all. <laughs> it's like, oh well, never mind. <laughs> But I think she's number three, and so she's one of the uh, one that posted the baskets. And obviously, we know that Megan numbered all the jars that she put out there and sent to her friends and uh, acquaintances, maybe as well. And so uh, this is what Kelly wrote about it. She says, "Ooh, just ta a taste of what's to come." So proud of you, M. At American Riviera Orchard. So yeah, um, so she got her basket. And so I'm telling you, very exciting. I can't wait to try this strawberry jam that, <laughs> and it's wild because those on the other side of the pond are going, I mean, I think this has to be the most famous jam in the world. I have never in my life seen world news about jam before. <laughs> Maybe, maybe I've been like, my head has been under, a, you know, under a brown paper bag buried somewhere because I have never in my life seen jam made international news <laughs> and people are debating jam and having competition with jam and having issues with jam, <laughs> strawberry jam, no less. <laughs> I'm like, this has been the funniest thing I have seen in a very long time. I mean, even Christopher Christopher Boozy was like, oh shoot, if I knew jam was gonna be something that you know would be an international topic, maybe I should have I should have made jam or something like that. I mean, I'm telling you, we sort of missed out in this whole thing because all of a sudden jam is international news. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, uh, Olivia, I appreciate it. Are uh, you getting a super sticker? Thank you so much for your support. I appreciate it. And uh, welcome to our jam conversation. <laughs> I'm like, jam. I mean, it's jam, people. Like, literally, untwist your knickers and stop clutching pearls about jam. You know? <laughs> and uh, Mindy Kalid also got one. She posted hers. And so she was number 19. And of course, we, you know, we talked about Mindy Kalin. I think it was even the last episode. We talked about Mindy Kalin because um, there was a photo of her with Prince Harry at the Better Up conference. And of course, um, this is a photo of her when she was on um, Megan's podcast, Archetypes, uh, was a year ago, two years ago, whatever it was. And so, and she obviously got her, um, her, her strawberry jam. She's like obsessed. <laughs> So I guess she's obsessed with the jam and not probably not sharing it either. So very exciting. And also Tracy Ellis Ross got hers. I love this photo of Tracy Ellis Ross. She was number 21 on this. So I think Squatty's are um, saving up and, um, you know, putting it, I guess it's going to be like a little puzzle, fitting everybody in and see who got what, when. And so very, very, very exciting. So she's got her, her, um, her pot of strawberry jam. And I love the, I love the fact that she blended it with the yellow because it really, you know, it stands out. And so, yeah. And I'm assuming it's a little bit tangy, which I love. I love different flavors in my stuff. So hopefully it is. I'm very excited. And again, to remind you, this stuff is not even out. It's just sending it to her friends, you know? So, <laughs> Mrs. SR, thank you so much. Like, thank you for all you do on behalf of the Sussexes. My pleasure. I love our faves. I love talking about our faves. So, yeah, whether I'm on here or an X or whatever platform, I love talking about our faves. So, yes. And, oh, Mrs. S. Thank you so much. You were a member of the channel for six, uh, 16 months. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. Thank you. Um, very, very, I mean, oh my gosh, that was 16 months ago? I feel like the time is just flying by. Oh my gosh, that is wild. Uh, Sussex Spotlight says, Tracy Ross just seems out of left field, LOL. Not exactly. Uh, Megan has a relationship with Tracy Ross, uh, Tracy Ellis Ross before. When she did the 40 by 40 thing, Tracy Ellis Ross was one of the people that she, um, you know, that was, did it for, with her. And if you actually looked on 
Archwell's website, you will actually find Tracy Ellis Ross on there. She was part of that 4040 thing, you know, 40 minutes helping an, another woman who may be looking for employment when uh, I think that was Megan's 40th birthday. So if you look on the, um, does that mean you haven't gone perusing the Archwell website? Shame, Sports Sussex Spotlight. <laughs> Go peruse and you'll find stuff in there. And so, no, Tracy Ellis Ross was one of the people that was part of that. And it's actually on the Sussex's website. So you will see it. So, no, it's not out of, of left field at all. I cannot speak anymore. It is not out of left field at all. So even though, you know, she's not like she's not considered like one of the oh at least i don't know i don't know what their relationship is so maybe i just need to stop talking about it so but anyways i'm happy tracy ellis ross got it and i love this photo she just looks smashing in this photo um sylvia says a pedal they are so silly on salt island <laughs> that they are now writing in their trash tabloids that K king charles the third jam has sold out <laughs> That island makes everything a competition when there is none. I'm like, you know, the I think the thing that I I um I understand if I understand a little bit about part of that waitrose deal with Charles is that's um some of that stuff the proceeds go to charity. So look, if it sells out and it goes to charity, look, hey, I'm all for that. If um, but it's it's kind of sad. It'll be kind of sad for them that it couldn't have sold out before, but they needed Megan <laughs> for that to sell out. <laughs> but again, if it go, if all you know, as they say, it's went to charity. If that's the truth, then hey, I'm all for that. Hey, I'm, look, <laughs> you know. But it's very silly. I mean, as you and you're so right. It's like competition when there's nobody's competing here. The girl just sent it to her friends. It's not even available. We don't even know if that's gonna make the cut. <laughs> so yeah, it's very, very funny. Um Church Nelly says that's why right, Vanzola, the British monarchy gave her lemons. She's making lemon strawberry jam, lemon cake, and lemon chicken. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I like, I love this. <laughs> Thank you. And it looks fabulous too. And she'll make a pretty penny from it. Thank you, um, um, Lottie, for your super sticker. I appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my goodness. And Raffaella too. Thank you guys. I appreciate your support. Thank you very, very much. So, uh, let's see. Some more. Oh, hey, Karen. I thought I saw you. I was like, I know I'm not going crazy, even though I thought I was for like a minute. But I'm happy you're here. It says, I can't wait to get my strawberry jam from America Riviera Orchard. I am excited. ARO, we are ready. I know, right? Credit card in hand or debit card or whatever. Cash or however you pay. <laughs> Money is there to be had. So apparently, according to that People article, it's going to be in the spring. Although it's like, come on, it's already spring. You know, but I guess a little bit later in the spring on Megan's time. So there you go. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Sonia says, King Charles is getting some of Megan's effect. You know. At this point, that man needs it because <laughs> he sure certainly doesn't have any effect on his own. <laughs> they need it. They need Megan to give them. And it's kind of, you know, embarrassing for them, but they need her. It's like Megan is minding her own business and her light is shining on them. <laughs> it's just like, hey, her power, man, her absolute power. Hey, TC, uh, TMCD, how are you? <laughs> so... Um, let's see what else you guys are saying before I move on. Uh, Karen M says, Megan and have the best attorney and they have advised them on everything they need to do for her brand. Of course. I mean, you know, of, I'm sure others would say, you know, come up with nonsense about this, but yeah, I mean, Megan has... She has all kinds of people who are in business. And, and again, this is not the first time Megan is doing stuff. She's all had business before. <laughs> this is not new to this. This is just a different part of it. She had a business. She ran a business before. So this is, yeah, this is not nonsense. Um, 
like people would have any thought that she would not have all of those things taken care of. That's crazy. Um, Karen says, can we order the t-shirts? Yes. You know, I think if you go on Kelly's website on her Instagram, um, you will find, you'll be able to, I think that in the profile, you'll be able to find it there. So yeah. So if you go on her Instagram page, her profile should have the link to get the t-shirt. So, and uh, traditionally just posted it, uh, shop Alliance, uh, Alliance of Moms org there's the link to purchase the t-shirts so yeah cool um let's see what else is happening thank you church nelly um and again you know we only have this and people are going some people are going crazy about it which you know we are going crazy about it on the in a good way but you know again she's only put out one thing and uh, so far she has uh 600 or at least the the brand has a 602,000 as of earlier today. I think it when the last time I saw it was 603,000 uh, followers for uh, for an Instagram page that literally has no fo following no one and only has a logo. So, <laughs> you know, hey, her power, right? Her absolute power. And again, this is jam. And I only just got these, you know, pulled up these three. There's like, if you pull put in Megan and Jam or um, American Riviera Orchard, you get tons and tons and tons of articles from, I'm not talking even about tabloid stuff, legit websites <laughs> talking about Jam. <laughs> See, the delicious first product from Megan Duchess of Sussex, new lifestyle brand, CNN. Like CNN has nothing better to do with their day. <laughs> Neither did BBC, apparently. First product for Megan's lifestyle brand revealed. <laughs> Harper's Bazaar Arabia. I mean, like, hello. I'm, again, worldwide news here. Can you buy Megan Markle's jam? Um, in the GCC. I'm not sure what GCC is, so if anybody knows clue me and I was trying to figure out what GCC is. I had, don't know. Um, get ready to indulge the, in breakfast bliss with Meghan Markle's new delectable homemade spreads. I mean, how do these people even know? She's like, she gave us one. So they assumed it's delectable and it spreads. So hopefully the spreads means the flavors that we want, which is um, marmalade, raspberry blueberry my mango um something else we something else i think i'm missing another one but you know those are those and others are the flavors that we're looking for so <laughs> but again jam making international news <laughs> real forbes is also reporting <laughs> forbes is also reporting it i'm telling you we're talking about jam I absolutely love it. I love it. And, you know, leaving Megan a little bit, Harry has been busy as well. Harry has been doing his stuff. I mean, we saw him at Better Up the conference. Then he did polo. He did, even at the polo, I mean, he did the games, but he also took part in panel discussions about Sintibali. And then the next day, there are photos of him directing or at least in executive producer mode for the polo documentary right after, you know, the day after they did the polo match and all of that stuff. So he has been doing all of that. And then yesterday he joined the Travelers Annual, um, it's like a conference and they, it was in Paris, but he joined via video link. And so uh, Sussex.com posted about it. And, uh, you know, Harry's talking about the importance of obviously tourism, but also sustainability and all of that stuff. And so this is part of what he said. He says, Prince Harry said, travel and tourism rely on destinations held together by communities without which we have nowhere to travel to. Communities it, um, are the beating heart of travel and we must do better as by the people who are the custodians of the places we visit. We he we've heard from some fantastic organizations like Invisible Cities who train people affected by homelessness to be tour guides 
in their own city. And I think this is fantastic. It's the first time I was hearing about it and I thought it was fantastic. And Global Himalayan Expeditions, whose programs have helped electrify 200 Himalayan vill villages, impacting over 60,000 lives for the better. More and more people are wanting to make informed travel choices so that the benefit of travel is felt by all. Travelers and its partners bring the combined market value of nearly th uh, $3 trillion and are working hard to provide that resource at a systems level. So um, they are doing great. I mean, travelers, we know that TripAdvisor, what's it? Uh, TripAdvisor is called uh, Visa and all of those different travel, big travel agencies and um, are part of this and they are part of this whole initiative for, you know, for sustainable travel and, and really taking care of the communities when you travel. Because uh, there are some um, destinations that everybody goes to and then they destroy the destination for the people that live there. And so this is really working with the communities to make sure that we don't destroy people's communities and that we're not all going to the same place and then destroying it, but spread it out. And, and I know on their website, they also feature places that normally we won't think of or we just didn't know it existed. And so they give, give ideas about those places as well so that we you know, we normalize those places as well. And I absolutely love where it talks about them training people, you know, unhoused or homeless people to be travel guides. And so thereby giving them jobs so that they can get out of their situations. I think that is a fantastic, fantastic idea. I think, you know, maybe we, that's what we need to do in New York. You know, there are so many people here and a lot of people, they know the place, but, you know, if you give them, help them, and then you give them the job of touring the city and showing people the city, you help them, you help the city. You, I mean, it's just, there's so many benefits that we need to adopt that. So I was just like, I really like that idea. <laughs> so kudos to Prince Harry. He is doing great. Um Travelers is doing great, Invictus is doing great, Santa Bala is doing great. I mean, Polo, I mean, everything is doing fantastic with Harry. And so one of the things that happened also yesterday that we found out is that Harry has changed his place of residence. Of course, he's been living in California for four years, but the UK was also his, you know, always written about or that's what he would always put that as his residence i mean he's from there so that was his primary residence and so he recently i guess um in the last few days recently um edited or changed his place of re his residence and so for travelers and so if you can see at the bottom it's no longer uk but it's now the united states and obviously travelers is prince harry's company so you know i've always felt like he needed to move it from the uk to the us i feel the same way about invictus games that needs to also the same thing needs to happen to the invictus games need to move from the uk into where he is now and so uh, take away any chance of the uk trying to mess with invictus games but of course this is bring a whole big hubbub again which you know oh my gosh is he gonna come back does that mean and it's like y'all bullied the man out of the country now you having an issue that he's changed he's not coming back he said he's not coming back at least not to live or any of that stuff and you as you can see from their the uk's favorite tabloid they were all celebrating when king charles asked them to move out of uh, frogmore cottage uh, you can see frogmore at the bottom there this was the daily mail's headline charles evicting harry and megan from frogmore is an act of a king putting his country first well harry's act of changing his place of residence is him putting you know, his life first and where he is Family is first. So there you go. You all shouldn't have a problem with this now. So I think the the realization is now setting in that, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you mean he's really gone four years later? I mean, look, whatever, for me, whatever it helps to get them to that place to understand that Harry isn't coming back. He's not interested in being a royal or at least a working royal 
quote unquote working royal. He's not interested. So, okay, it's been four years, but maybe this is going to be the thing <laughs> that finally gets through to them that, yeah, it's over. <laughs> they left and they're not coming back. They're not interested. So, I don't know if I, you know, obviously we don't know his visa status. I mean, if that crazy organization in the U.S. have any chance, everybody will know that, you know, the judge has that information now and they're deciding if to release it. I mean, this whole thing is just such nonsense. But, you know, whatever, we'll see what happens with that. But Harry has changed. And, you know, again, I've always felt like it'll take him a minute because, you know, he you're attached to. It's what he's always known. And more and more, I think he is getting comfortable with the idea of letting go and realizing like, okay, yeah, I, I need to move on. But I guess everyone gets there on their own time. Some people could cut, you know, cut off things like, you know what, that's it. I'm done. I move. Some people, it just takes them longer. You know, and, and it just, so you have to just allow people space to get there when he gets there. And it's been four years. And so I think finally he is, you know, even when he was doing that interview, when he was in, um, I think it was for ABC, it was ABC or NBC, when they were in Vancouver, Whistler, and he did their whole, what is it, that little interview that they turned into a documentary kind of thing. And one of the things he said is that he has thought about becoming a citizen. And so the fact that he even, you know, get to the place to think that it's a process. And I think slowly but surely he is withdrawing and pulling back from it. So good for him. I mean, everyone's different, you know, they'll get there when they get there. You just pray for them because it's difficult. It's very, very a difficult thing. And so that has been all he has known his entire life. And it's just, you know, changing your entire life. And so please pray for him as he goes. I can't imagine how difficult this has been, but it's good to see he's got there. He's now United States. So yeah. <laughs> and it's funny. Um, Part of the um, the panel that they were on for Travelers, um, was it yesterday? Uh, at least that's when they posted it, uh, is obviously when Harry is doing a Zoom or Megan is doing a Zoom, the majority of the time, nobody pay attention to what they say first and foremost. The first thing you look is like, okay, let's look in the background and see if we can recognize anything in the background. And then we'll come back and listen to what they say. But it's like anything. What's in the back? Ooh, let's see who's in that photo. What book are they reading? Who? And of uh, exactly what happened this time too. <laughs> and it's funny because I saw it and I was listening to it. And then I saw a post like, oh, there's this photo of him and Princess Diana. And I'm like, how could they make that out from what that's in the back there? I'm like, that is amazing that they were able to make that out. And another, um, and that's the photo, uh, I think it was people I got that from. They, you know, that's the photo of Harry right in the back there. And then at the top with the arrow at the top, is a photo of this girl. Um, I think she's from Connecticut. She does, uh, she's a graphic artist and she does these sketches, amazing sketches of the Sussexes. She did one of their Christmas photo, uh, Christmas photo with Lilibet and um, Prince Archie. And she did others as well. And somehow Megan and Harry saw it and they purchased it from her. And so I think she uh, said that, you know, she, Megan you know, said she would support her work. And so she, and that's her Royal Sketches um, by Jan V. And that is her sketch that is at the top of Harry there. And so she was like, oh my gosh, this is more than I thought. And, you know, so she is very happy about it. It's, uh, I think People Magazine is the one that um, did a, who knows, the tabloids may have picked that up by now and probably will hound her now that they know that she, you know, she's connected, she has a connection with the Sussexes, they will hound her, of course they will. But um, this is her sketch and that is the one at the top there of Harry's head. But again, I have no idea how people are able to spot this thing and just like, it is, I mean, it's the same way I feel about when people do that with fashion. Like, I have no concept of how they're able to do that. So, and they do it so fast. And you're like, my goodness, <laughs> I 
I'm still I'm still trying to get past Harry looking like he has a haircut. I didn't even get to the back to the pictures yet. You know, Harry looks like he had a little bit of a haircut. So I was on that one. Then I saw it. I was like, oh my gosh, that is amazing. So yes. So these are photos that are in the back of Harry as he was doing his Zoom call. So and I think they have to be very strategic where they are and what's in the back of them because goodness, people pick that stuff up like crazy. So <laughs> what else is happening? I mean, if you're a squaddy and you don't know this, I will say shame on you and I'm taking away your squad card. <laughs> you know, Prince Harry reportedly set for a multi-million dollar windfall from his record-breaking book spare. And then another article saying Prince Harry's memoir branded as one of the most successful books of all times. So of course it is. And I mean, we've, you know, in every way, shape and form, we've dissected this thing from soul book sold, um, you know, to library Twitter, to all of it. So again, if you are a squaddy and you don't know this, we are taking your library, I'm not library, but your squad card away from you. <laughs> So, of course, it is the best selling and the biggest book of all times, of course. So, yes. <laughs> and which is a, a lot of um, the angst and the anger in the UK because now, you know, they the whole narrative before was like, oh, that book is not going to sell and all of that stuff. And now the drama is like, oh, he's rolling in the dough. So that's another, you know, harum for them. It's like, get over it. <laughs> but anyways... And then I, I read into this. I saw this and I was like, you know, people. <laughs> so someone was said, if I speak, <laughs> Camilla has back. This is uh, one of um, the royal reporters. Actually, I can't even call her a reporter because, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's just, she's just a palace mouthpiece. That's all she is. She's not a reporter. The Rebecca English is she's not a reporter. Um, it's just palace PR. Queen Camilla has backed the nationwide pop-up scheme in schools to help young people at risk of domestic abuse or becoming involved in toxic relationships. And I'm like, um, uh, is she going to be talking about the toxic relationship that she became involved in with a teenager, you know, that one, <laughs> is she going to be talking about that? And I mean, look, it would be a great time if she's honest, if she's really doing this, if she is honest to admit her part in creating a toxic relationship for two men, for two people and a, and a, and a teenager. And so I was just reading this like, these people have no self-awareness whatsoever. <laughs> I was just like, really? <laughs> and again, because Rebecca English is not a journalist or not a reporter, that's just like, oh, yes, you know, she's going to be talking about the young people about, you know, not becoming involved in talking relationships. Okay, move on. And it's like, a journalist would have been like, uh, excuse me, uh, so are you going to be talking about your part in that relationship and how it affected the teenager that you abused? You know, but again, this is Palace PR and they would do no such thing. So, yeah, it is just, <laughs> it, it's just, it's funny to watch that. I'm like, oh. as Dr. Shola says, if I speak. <laughs> And um, I'm going to get into the chat in a little bit, but I just want to uh, finish this up um, a little bit. Uh, Prince Harry's court case is, there's a little bit of a surprising turn that is happening with this court case. And uh, this is a little bit from The Independent. It says, Harry may be forced to settle claim against the son publisher due to legal costs. The Duke of Sussex can be forced to settle his legal claim against the Sun publisher over alleged unlawful information gathering because of the high risk of the risk of high legal costs. The high court has been told. The 39 the Harry 39 alleges he was targeted by journalists and private investigators working for news group newspaper or NGN, which also publishes the now default news of the world. He is among a number of people to bring cases against the publisher, many of whom have settled their claims in recent years, including actress Sienna Miller 
ex-footballer Paul Gassion, I guess, uh, Comet Catherine Tate, and Spice Girls Melanie Chisholm. So why why is this important? Um, and what and what's going on with this is this happened yesterday. Hugh Grant, who, who was also part of this claim with Harry, you know, suing the um, Rupert Murdoch. They've, you know, they were trying to, at least on Harry Potter, trying to even get Rupert Murdoch into court for him to testify and all of that stuff. What happened is they, well, let me let Hugh Grant tell you what happened. He wrote a, like a 14, um, 14 post thread yesterday and I'm reading it off um, thread reader. So that way I'm not looking at 14, thread, uh, 14 posts. And so this is what he says happened with his side of the case. He says, for anyone who has been interested in my lawsuit against the sun, the news is that I have had to settle my claim out of court before it gets to trial. News group are claiming that they are entirely innocent of things I had accused the son of doing. Phone hacking, unlawful information gathering, landmine tapping, the burglary of my flat and office, and office, the bugging of my car, the illegal blagging of medical records, lies, perjury, and the destruction of evidence. As is common with entirely innocent people, they are offering me an enormous sum of money to keep this matter out of court. I don't want to accept this money or settle. I would love to see all the allegations that they deny tested in court. But the rules around civil litigation means that if I proceed to trial and the court awards me damages that are even a penny less than the settlement offer, I would have to pay the legal costs of both sides. My lawyers tell me that that is exactly what would likely happen here. Rupert Murdoch lawyers are very expensive. So even if every allegation is proven in court, I would still be liable to something approaching 10 million pounds in cost. I'm afraid I am shy at that fence. Rupert Murdoch has spent over one billion pounds in damages to claimants and in lawyer fees settled over 1,500 claims in this way. He seems remarkably determined that there shouldn't be a trial of facts. Murdoch's settlement money has a stink and I refuse to let this be hush money. I have spent the best part of 12 years fighting for the, a free press and don't that doesn't distort the truth and um goes on to says uh oh th that doesn't distort the truth abuse ordinary members of the public or hold elected mps to ransom in pursuit of newspaper barons personal profit and political power so this money will be repurposed via groups like Hacked Off into the general campaign to expose the worst excess of our oligarch-owned press. I will th like to thank my legal team like Angelie Sanjini, David Sherbert, Evan Harris, Dan Waddle, and a lot of others, um, including um, Graham, Graham Smith and, I'm sorry, Graham Johnson, who owns Violent Investigates and stuff. All of these people who were um, helped to, you know, try to get this case to trial. And so, again, it is it is one of those things that about the British um, court system that stinks. Like we saw Sienna Miller and so many others have had to um, drop their, not drop their case, but settle out of court. Because again, as he's saying, even if he, um, whatever Rupert Murdoch people offered him, and their people are saying it's probably more than like $10 million, or whatever, to, um, to, not, to not go to court. If Hugh Grant would have re refused that, say, $10 million, and if he, even if he won every point, everything he accused the son of doing and the um, news of the world of doing to him, even if he won every single thing, and if whatever the judge awards him is one penny less than what Rupert Murdoch um, 
you know, offered him, he now is going to have to pay, in spite of winning, he still has to pay all of Rupert Murdoch's court fees and his own. And as he's saying, that is approaching about $10 million. And Hugh Grant is not a, he's, a, he's, a, he's getting older, he has a family, he has kids, you know, and he's like, I, I don't have that kind of money right now. And so that is the thing with the court. And I'm very uh, happy I, um, there is someone posted this that's very important to understand about the court and how the court system works in the UK, which is sucks. It is really bad. So the legal reason to settle, it says Thompson Allen, head of the media, head of media and information law at Bidman's said the loser usually in any regular court case in a normal court case with regular people <laughs> that works that's functioning it says in a normal court um it says uh, the loser usually pays the winner's cost but a rule designed to encourage settlements before trial can change this and so this is what is happening with the UK costs almost always exceeds the damage. So even if whatever the judge is awarding you, the cost for lawyers and all of that stuff and court fees always exceed that. And because of that, Hugh Grant has to settle. It says the cost always exceed the damages, sometimes by hundreds of thousands of pounds. He told the PA Media News Agency. So instead of receiving damages, the winner can find themselves paying out enormous sums to their beaten opponent. Think about that for a second. You won your case and then you have to pay the loser an enormous amount of money. <laughs> Although the amount hasn't been revealed, Grant appears to have been offered much more money to settle than he would have liked, he would have been likely to have won at trial, legal commentator Joshua Rosenberg told Radio 4 PM program. The courts don't want people to waste their time by going to court and suing for something that they were had already been offered, he said. Going to trial will co would cost a fortune, he said. And unless you happen to have a fortune and are prepared to lose a fortune, it simply wouldn't be worth it, even if the costs were in some way restricted. Another um, legal person says, and Gideon Bermain, partner and head of the reputation protection team at Simpkins LLP said, there are very serious ramifications if a person receiving an offer does not accept it and is then less successful at trial. Hugh Grant must have been left in little doubt by his lawyers that the offer was at such a level that he may not actually beat it at trial, he said. Therefore, even though he may have preferred to have his day in open court, the risk was simply too great and he accepted it. And so this is kind of the way how this really sick way that it works in the UK. The law is set up for Rupert Murdoch. It's, it's really set up for them to win. Their victims can't win here. It's, you know, they could literally, what it's set up to do is that for them to buy out their victims and then go on their merry way and in buying out their victims, they impose these NDAs where the victim then can't speak about what they have done to them. They have now rendered almost mute. I'm glad Hugh Grant is still listing the things that he's accused them of, but a lot of people just zip it up and go away, i.e. Prince William when he took that money and just went away. The, the legal system is so messed up. People can't afford to sue. That's why the press gets away with all that stuff. Unless they change the law, this is how, this is why this, you know, this is why the, the, the tabloids are able to do what they do. Even in this situation, Rupert Murdoch's have very, very deep pockets. It's nothing for him to give up, you know, 10, 12, I mean, look at, he's already paid over a billion dollars, a billion pounds. And so it's nothing for him. He doesn't want it in court. He doesn't want it. He doesn't want to be exposed. And so it's 
It's more important to him to pay someone off and put the price at such a, it's so high that they cannot refuse. Because again, as Hugh Grant says, even if he is one penny under whatever they offered, he then will have to turn around and pay Rupert Murdoch's team over about $10 million or at least 10 million pounds. That is sick. And that is exactly the situation Harry has now found himself. And just before I came in, um, and I have to go back and see if it's actually true, um, I read that they made Harry an offer. So whether Harry is going to take the offer or not, at this point, it's just like, you know, if you have $10 million <laughs> or 10 million pounds, to put up there, you know, again, and then you just, even if you have the 10 million to hopefully you win, the judge, whatever, you know, if you allow the, the case to go forward, the judge usually give such a low amount that it ends up, even though you win, it almost ends up like, it's not even worth it because one, the, lo the law is not changing. They're just going to go back and do whatever it is they're doing. Look at the mirror. Harry won the case. The mirror hasn't stopped doing whatever it is they were doing. They haven't stopped being, I mean, being, you know, a tabloid hacks. They haven't stopped. I mean, now I don't know if they're still hacking people's phone. Would I be shocked? No. So even though Harry won and you know they should have gotten so much more money, it's like a hundred and something thousand here and another hundred and a few hundred and thousand here. It is, it almost feels like it's not worth, like you get the most like victory, but then for your pain and suffering, the money that the judges are giving out is just like, it's so paltry compared to the amount of money these people have. And the reason, you know, they keep doing what they're doing is because they can rely on these kinds of laws. And so who knows what Harry's going to choose, what Harry's going to do. And it's just like, at this point, it's just like, you know what? Maybe this way, as um, Hugh Grant says, he's going to repurpose the money and into Hacked Off is his, Hacked Off is his um, news outlet that goes after and, you know, and work. It's kind of does the same thing like Byline Times and Byline Investigates does really expose the press and all of the shenanigans that they're doing. So that's what he's doing. So he's going to, he said he's repurposing the money. He's like, it, the, his money has stink on it. I don't want it. So take that money and then use that same money to fight him and others like him. So that's what Hugh Grant is going to do. Don't know if Harry is going to do the same. Uh, you know, again, <laughs> it's just like, I just, I, I've never seen a law that is so messed up and just, I, <laughs> it's like, I, I, I can't, it, I'm a speechless as I'm reading this stuff. Like what? Even if you won, you have to still go turn around and pay the loser if what the judge awards you is less than what their original offer was. Are you serious? <laughs> And 99.9999% of the time it is. And so you'll always end up losing money. That's why nobody could sue. That's why the, the press is the way they are. Because, because that how, that's how the law is. And you would think like, oh my gosh, labor, you know, this is the Tories. The Tories want the press on their side. So they give them all of this stuff. You would think, okay, because lab, labor party... Looks like it's going to take over whenever they decide that they're going to have an next election, whatever. And you would think there'll be changes. No, Keir Starmer is there. Keir Starmer is right there in Rupert Murdoch's bed. He's not going to change a thing. So unless they completely, you know, have, you know, Jeremy Corbyn or one of them becomes prime minister, none of this is changing. And it's probably going to get worse. And so it's just, it's really crazy. So pray for Harry. Don't know what he will choose. Is he going to go forward just to say, you know, at the end, yes, I won this. I, or is he going to take it and you do it as um, Hugh Grant done, repurpose it and use it to fight him and others like him? Who knows? We will see what his choice is. But that's the situation he's in right now. Take the money or risk losing millions. I, 
and, and like, what do you choose? Because you want to go after him. You want to go because it's right to go after some people like Rupert Murdoch and the likes of him because of all the horror that they have put people through and how, how many times they've messed up people's lives, including Harry's. But then you have a law that and judges that are literally sitting there like, you better take that money or you are going to pay even if you win. And it's just, <laughs> I just, I, I can't even... <laughs> So anyway, so that's the kind of surprise thing. I didn't know that was where they were. And also David uh, Sherborne in court, he literally said, even though I feel like you kind of did a double speak, because he literally said um, in court that by December, all of these court cases will not be there. The, the court case with Harry is scheduled for January. So when he said that, the Sun legal team said, well, you know, from what he just said, it looks like the all, you know, the cases are going to, they're going to settle it. And then David Sherburn came back and said, well, just because I said that does not mean that that is what um, Prince Harry is going to be doing. So I feel like he kind of double speak there because if you're saying all the court cases will be cleared away before December, that means Harry is part of that. That means his court case is not going to be there. So what do you mean? So yeah, I felt like he kind of double speak. He did a bit of double speak there. I don't know. We will see what will happen. And so yeah, very very interesting to to see how that turns out. But whatever it is, Harry's whatever his choice is, this is a lot. I'm like, I want Harry to move on with his life away from these people, away from dealing with them. So if he chooses to just settle and then repurpose the money like you grant. I'm like power to you. If he chooses to fight power to you, scary, but power to you <laughs> because Harry is that he's a fighter. So yeah. So we'll see. We will absolutely see. Um, Karen says, can Prince Harry sue Murdoch in the U S as he is, as he's registered there. And now, so is Harry. You know, it's funny. Like I thought about that. I have no idea. Um, I don't know if Leslie is here. This is a Leslie question. <laughs> I don't know if I literally thought about that today because I was thinking about their um, Dominion, which is the company, the voting company that Fox News basically libeled in the US and they sued and got like what 800 and something million dollars out of Rupert Murdoch they settled it out of court and so I thought about that too and so I don't know if they could do that I you know that could be something uh, they'll definitely get a lot more money than if they sue in the UK the UK did just crimp on the money man jeez <laughs> They'd be like, I got 500,000. That's a lot. It's like, no, it's not. That's peanuts. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Anne Lewis says, Harry's case in January is against the Daily Mail, but the one with Hugh Grant is with the Sun. Um, he has both. He, he has both of them. And the court, this one with the Sun, uh, the case is supposed to happen in January 2026. So, I'm sorry, 2024. Oh, wait a minute, 2025? Yeah, I think it's January 2025. That's supposed to happen with the sun. We will see. Um, uh, yeah, so very, very, very interesting. Um, Joy says, I believe Harry will make the best decision. The law on this island are made against the average person. Yes, it is. In bringing cases to court, the government, media, courts all work together. Laws need to need change. Absolutely. This is absolutely correct. I mean, I have never heard of like you lose, but yet you win, but yet you have to pay the loser and all their court fees. That is crazy. It is like that's like at all because the judges don't want to deal with this. They don't, they just don't want this kind of case is in their court. They're like, well, if you refuse the offer, then you know. We're going to punish you basically for refusing the offer, which is what happens. You get punished for taking it to court and that should not be. So, um, Khadija says people with money should go to court to win and find the media guilty. When settlements are used, the media can say they weren't guilty, which is exactly this. In all the, the one over one billion that Rupert Murdoch has paid out, or the Sun to for the Sun, the Daily, um, the 
the news of the world, etc. Never, ever, ever acknowledged guilt. Never. That's one of the things that's there. There's they give you the money and they never have to acknowledge guilt in anything. So, but you know, you look at it sort of if you give it the Prince Andrew treatment, you know, how innocent are you when you're paying the accuser 12 million? It's the same thing with like Sienna Miller, the same thing here now with Hugh Grant. How many, you know, they said it's he they offered him quite a lot of money. So hopefully it's a few millions. And so how, if you're so innocent, why, you know, why would you pay millions of dollars to somebody if you're so innocent? So yeah, but we will see. We will absolutely see. Um, uh, Sonia says, if taking money to settle only to fight the same issue again means you will be right back where you started. With the courts making sure it's cost you more to win. What kind of nothing is that? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like you win, but then you're out 10 million pounds. And you're like, uh, well, what did you win exactly? You know? Yes, you get the moral victory of like, yes, I proved my case in court. But as Hugh Grant, I mean, again, Hugh Grant is not some young guy. And a lot of times people think, oh, he's an actor. He's done all these movies. They assume people like this are rich and they're not. And so it just, they're not, you know, they don't have, he, like he said, he's like, doesn't have 10 million pounds hanging out just to give away to Rupert Murdoch, a multi-billionaire. Plus he is a family, he has kids, he has a home, he has to pay for, he has kids. You know, he can't just give away money like that. And so this is, and I guess for him, the smartest route, take the money and then use that money to fight and hopefully change some laws. Because again, you can win all the money, you can win all the court cases, but if the law doesn't change, this just keeps happening over and over and over. So the problem is the law that needs to change and getting the right people as MPs and getting the right people leading the country, that will change those laws. So that's the issue there. This is just like the symptoms of the law, which is the thing that's causing all this mess. So yeah. Angelina says, punish uh, punishment for pursuing actual justice over payout. Exactly. This is exactly what it is. You are punished for seeking justice. This is so perfectly put. Thank you, Angelina. This is exactly what it is. Because judges don't want, they don't want to have to deal with this. So if you want justice, you're going to be punished. And it's like, it's crazy. Um, let's see. And Louis says, I wonder if I wonder if Harry can bring out a civil case against Pierce Morgan as he was named in the document. But Harry must save his money for his own family unless his grandmother left him money. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, you, you uh, as much as Harry, I'm sure, wants to pursue this and get justice, which he rightly deserves, he also too has a family. He also too don't want to be spending all his money on this stuff. And when he has kids who he wants to make sure that they are taken care of and never have to worry about money again. So he also, and also to his peace of mind, their peace of mind, is it worth his mental health to, you know, these battles on and on and on with these people? Harry is a fighter. That could be the thing that has been driving him and all of that stuff. That could be the case. But, you know, so I, I'm sure they're weighing all of that stuff to see what is the best decision. What is the thing that, you know, that would be the best for them. And again, all of this stuff is just Band-Aid stuff. The, the, the problem is the thing that's festering at the bottom, the wound that's festering at the bottom of the sore is the law that needs to change. You know, so, yeah, it just craziness uh let's see joy says i just want all these court cases to be over for harry and megan so they can go on with their lives exactly yeah exactly i want it to be over for them so that they don't have this nonsense and having to deal with this country and these people just get them in their rear view mirror so they could jay can just focus on their lives and their family totally uh let's see uh, 
Little Mac said, oh, she's talking to Karen. I'm sure that the words on the U.S. papers would be less inflammatory because the U.S. laws are better for crimes committed in the U.K. The charge have to be raised there. The charge have to be raised there to judge against those laws. I'm not sure I understand what I'm reading. But Karen, I hope you do. <laughs> so, yes. Thank you, Little Mac. Um, Karen Warner says, um, uh, to, the most important thing here is that they took them to court and it is in court records and history. That's true. The British court is set up for colonialism for them to continue to control. Very, very, very true. It's set up there for these media barons who control everything and, um, others in power, whether it be media or the royal family or government to be in control. The little people, the regular folks, none of this help any of them. Because again, we see this whole situation. This is not set up for the public. It's not set up for their subjects. It's craziness. So, anyways, what else in what else is going on? Away from that stuff, a take a breather. Thank you, Church Nelly, for being in love with Nacho. Because I saw these photos. <laughs> so this is our breather moment away from the British courts. And for no reason whatsoever, this is Nacho and his dad. <laughs> I'm like, you know, putting this together, I'm like, yeah, we need a breather after all that legal stuff. <laughs> this is Nacho and his papa. So, yes, I love these photos. They are just absolutely beautiful. I mean, goodness, they are, they are both such beautiful men. And Nacho look, especially the photo at the bottom right, Nacho looked so much like his dad. It's like, wow. So, yes, yeah, so... Uh, Mr. Figueres made a very cute one or very handsome one. So, yes. <laughs> and this is uh, one of our squaddies put this together and I thought it was so beautiful. Thank you, cool girl K22, Casey Correct on X. Thank you for putting this together. Um, she says, about last week, well, this is her post on X. She says, you have to give it to Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex. The man works. He is not a work shy prince. And this is um, what she she put, posted this um, like photo of this with all of Harry's events in the last what few weeks, and says about last week, better up uplift 2024 panel in San Francisco, Santibali panel at Zetina Miami, Santibali polo match in Wellington, Santibali fireside chat Wellington, Netflix doc producer Wellington, all of this in Florida obviously, travelers round table France virtual and travel is speech in France virtual. I mean, Harry is busy. <laughs> he does not have time to nonsense. And this photo I have, of course, this was Harry going to court, I think it was last year. And it's just for no reason at all, I wanted that photo. I was like, I love that photo of Prince Harry and that suit, man. He was looking amazing in that suit. So for no reason at all, that photo. <laughs> Other than just like, oh, Harry. <laughs> But I mean, Harry has been, you know, out there doing his thing and minding his business, being his amazing self. And so, yes, I just, I love it. And thank you so much, KCC Correct, for posting this because it is amazing to just see it all laid out on paper. And that's not even say, counting what Megan is doing. This is just all Harry. So, yes. <laughs> of course, Church Nelly, of course. <laughs> I knew you would be out there like celebrating this. <laughs> Church Nelly's like, I have those nachos. Oh, you do? Oh, this is the, I, I don't know that I've seen his father before. Maybe I have and I just forgot. But yeah. Pan says, whoa, no shade dad. <laughs> it's like, no shade dad. What a model. I know. They are both beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful men. Um, Let's see. Karen Warner says, says, now you see why Prince Harry did not appeal the Daily Mail case because that is what Daily Mail would have prolonged the case to tie up Prince Harry in court to distract him from what is more important. Yes, and is exactly what Prince Harry said. He just ended it so that way he can focus on these others. So we will see what he is going to do with that. So yes, and yes, Harry is busy. He is booked and busy. Yes, yes, yes. It is great to see. Thank you, Lauren. 
Um, let's see. Uh, Terry says, Harry is the only royal prince who is not afraid to work. He may leave the royal family, but he's still, but he's still a working royal in his own right. I'm telling you, and that's the one thing. I mean, there are many things I could knock Prince Charles for. There are many, many things. He's the worst father in the world, honestly. But Prince Harry definitely took uh, and got his work ethics from Prince Charles because Prince Charles, that's who he is. I mean, the man is a workaholic and at the expense really of his sons as they were growing up. It was all about work and he has not changed it. And it's amazing. You're like, well, where did William get his laziness? I don't know. <laughs> from Camilla, his mother Camilla, because she is known as the laziest person. She And that's what they called her, literally. The laziest person in the world. That's what they, she'd never held a job in her life. And so William got his laziness from his mother Camilla. That's all I got to say about that. But Harry definitely has his work ethics like King Charles. I mean, they just go. And, and it's so funny because you can see why Harry and Meghan had they could not function within the royal fold and it was like and i thought about it it's kind of like trying to fit a square in a circle or in an oblong or whatever shape it is that it just doesn't fit and they're trying to fit people like harry and megan who are go-getters who can start something from scratch and four years later, look at all the stuff they're doing, their producers, they have podcasts, they have cooking shows, they have all of this stuff, trying to fit that within the royal system of the monarchy, you can see why that didn't fit. You can see why Harry and Meghan were frustrated. You can see why, you know, people are like, oh my gosh, how dare they send me a 5 a.m. email? I can't function at 5 a.m. I can't even think by 10 a.m. What are you doing? I have to leave work at, at 3. What do you mean I have to stay until 5? You know what you I mean? They function at a laziness in, in, in the UK and within the monarchy. Their, their level of work is so low that, no wonder there was frustration. No wonder they were like, you know, they could not function together. And now you're seeing it and, and you, when you match up what they're doing, the level of work that they're doing in the UK, and then you match it up against Harry and Meghan, it's like there's no competition here. They couldn't function in that system. They, these two are go-getters. They, they, they want something, they do it. In the UK and within the monarchy, you have this, croaking old system that's like from the 1800s somehow trying to function in the year 20 well you know 2019 when they left it's like it just doesn't fuck it doesn't work i'm like no wonder man it's like poor aria Becca trying to function with that system goodness so this for me this whole thing as horrendous as it has been with their leaving it's just all for the best i mean it's the best thing that has happened to these two they can do the things they want to do. They can, you know, accomplish the things they want to do and let those on Shutter Island take their very dead time doing whatever it is they think they're doing. And so, and again, you look at it and you can see the results and for them, the non-results. So yeah, I think it all worked out the way it needed to work out because goodness, I can't imagine Harry and Meghan in that situation, having all these dreams and visions that they couldn't materialize because they had to, you know, they had to dull their shine because two lazy ones have no idea what they're doing. So, yeah. A um, couple more before we end. Let's see. Sylvia says, Megan edited a whole best-selling UK Vogue while she was one of the lowest, when she was at the, some of her lowest points. Exactly. She was pregnant. She was being abused and all of that stuff. Exactly. And you could add in there award winning because that that um that issue won i think two or three awards for edward Enenfeld, that horrible person i'm not gonna say anything else about edward Enenfeld, but yeah so very interesting um let's see Angela says, I am on LinkedIn right now, and I just came across an executive assistant position that seriously sounds like it might be for Megan. I want to apply so bad, but I would have to live in Montecito. 
It pays a hundred and fifty. Girl, go for it. <laughs> Run, pack your bags, do whatever it is you need to do. <laughs> if you think you can do it, definitely apply. Hello. <laughs> and if you have to move to Montecito, girl, just pack your bags and go. I mean, you know, Montecito does have those rain and flood stuff. That would be the only issue. But other than that, it's very beautiful. I haven't been to Montecito. I've been to other parts of California, just not Montecito. But I heard it's very beautiful in the photos I've seen. So you better put that, you know, <laughs> put in your resume. So there you go. Um, Sonia says, pedal, watch Angela. Le oh, oh, Sonia, don't waste your time on Angela 11. <laughs> do not waste your time on Angela 11. All she's going to do is lie. So I don't even have to read the rest to know that Angela Levin just lying about what's like Kate donated and oh goodness. <laughs> so yeah, don't waste your time on Angela Levin. <laughs> Angela Levin is just trying to make money. That's it. And she has a group of people that follow her. She just makes money off of them. So don't be one. <laughs> Sylvia says, yes, the Vogue um, Vogue won several awards. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. So, yes. And, and you know, as you were saying before, when Megan was at her lowest point, she did that. So imagine now she is flying all the great things that she is doing. So, Jennifer, thank you so much for your super sticker. I appreciate your support. Thank you very, very much. I really, really appreciate it. Um, Kanisha says, I read Centibali Polo is registered in the UK. Yes. And the credit of $1 million went there. They need to bring all of that stuff in the US and whatever. Yes, because that's where Harry was. So all of that stuff is in the UK. I hope that changes. I especially hope for Invictus. Get Invictus away from those people fast. So anyways, guys, that's it. I think I have to jet out of here. Um, thank you so much. To, I haven't seen Lydia here. So, but Lydia, if you're listening, I love you. We miss you. Hopefully you'll pop in every now and then and see us, but thank you, Church Nelly, Karen M, Cookies and Cream. Did I say Cookies and Cream and Black Queen? I didn't see them either, but wherever you are, my loves, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you do for the channel. And thank you to our wonderful Two Cents crew who support the channel on a monthly basis. And to all of you who support in the chat, like you've seen the super thanks, the super stickers, the donations. I appreciate you so much for your support. Thank you guys so much. Have a fantastic rest of the day, whatever you're doing. I love you all. And I will chat with you next time. Bye. <laughs>